So anyway, let's get on with this recipe. Pork bellies. The great thing about pork bellies is what I'm going to show you right now. One, the skin, which we crisp up. In England, we'd fight for this stuff on Sunday lunch. In America, sadly, you don't see much fatty pork here. It seems to be, uh, the lean stuff seems to be far more um, favoured. But you can see there's fat in the meat and between the skin and the, the actual meat itself. Now, that, this is the perfect meal because it contains the, the right meat to fat ratio. And today, we're going to cook it two ways. Both extremely simple, but complete opposite ends of the spectrum. This one's going to be like a, an English style, call it what you like, roasted belly pork, which you can serve with, we'll serve it with some potatoes. Now, before you will jump up and down and say, potatoes on a low carb diet. Remember, this is not a no carb diet. You control the amount of carbs, and by carbs I mean all sugars. Don't buy into this um, glycemic index hype of slow release, fast release sugars. It doesn't make any difference. At the end of the day, sugar is sugar, and it's the total amount of sugar you expose yourself to in the diet. Now, we recommend, or Dr. Ellis recommends, no more than 25%, which if you take a 2,000 calorie diet, 25% of that in sugar, it's still quite a lot of sugar. So you can afford a few potatoes here and there, but it's just a few, just enough to give you the taste. So that's the first one. And the second one's an Asian style, braised belly pork, which um, a lot of you may, and I'll leave this here for the moment, I think I'll braise this one and roast this one. So the, the guys filming me and get a treat today. The downside of this, of course, is it takes, not of course, but it does take around two and a half hours to sort out. So, hygiene in mind, just having some pork. Wash our hands for this first stage. Okay, so what we do for the, for the braised pork, we want a nice hot pan, so we'll get that thing going right now. Just a simple frying pan here. No oil or fat needed in this, because there's enough fat in the meat. However, with the roasted version, we will add some peanut oil on the top and some salt and black pepper to give the skin a crisp. So, while we, just before we do that, we'll take this <coughs> piece here, put it skin side down, and just let the fat start to come out of that. This is the ham with the pork, so I'm going to use this now to take some peanut oil. Don't use olive oil or vegetable oils. I mean, vegetable oils are, I mean, you do your own research on the internet and find out why they're so bad for you. Olive oil, it, it just reaches too high a temperature and it goes rancid and it imparts a very strong flavour. So I just take a little bit of peanut oil here and I just rub it in and then a little bit of salt and the same with some black pepper. And so I'll do the same on the other side with some salt and black pepper, just rub a little bit of the oil that's left on my hand. Now this is so simple. Now if you can have a look into this dish here, you will see that I've put in some water and let's see if we can just move this over to you. What I've got in here is some, I've got a roasting rack obviously with some water in there, some, an onion, one onion is chopped up and I've got about five or six cloves of garlic and a couple of sprigs of thyme just to flavour. You can flavour it with what you like. Now this keeps it moist because the cooking is going to be for around two, two and a half hours. So we don't want this to dry out, even though it's got a lot of fat content in it. It's still a danger it can dry out. So the, moist, the water will do two things. It will provide like a steam for the, um, for the pork, and it will also um, provide you the basis of the sauce, which we'll get to later. So that's it. Pan, preheated oven, 375. And basically, the good thing about this is you put it in and forget about it. And forget about it to the point that is, I should say, that you don't, it, the water doesn't evaporate. If it does, simply top it up. And there you go, 375 degrees. That's the right. Okay, so that's in the oven. This is in the pan. Wait for it to heat to get it sizzling a bit. Um, now, it's actually going to be braised in this pot here. So I'm going to turn the heat onto this pot. And I'm going to add some water. It's just, I'll just use simple tap water on the basis that when it boils, it's purified. Okay? It's a lot easier than taking it from cold. So what I do here is put a few cups. And you want enough water just to cover the pork. You don't have to judge. Now one thing to remember is that in all the recipes I give, the quantities are down to you. It's that there are certain recipes that require more precise seasonings. But largely it's down to you. So the only ingredients that go in here 
apart from the water. And we'll get the water going, get the heat up now because we're going to flavour that. And I've got here the flavouring ingredients. Now, star anise. There's whole star anise, there's ground star anise. This is the whole star anise. It looks like this and it smells like licorice. Okay? Two pieces of ginger, just been peeled, cut in half, or with one big piece chopped in half. And I've got about four cloves of garlic. Could you put six or eight in? Yeah, you put what you want to. It'll make any difference. But that's going to go into here. And then basically we're going to colour the water with two ingredients. Or one ingredient in two forms, soy sauce. We've got light soy sauce, which is more of a seasoning. And that gives us the salty taste. We don't put any salt in this dish. And as to how much, well I just put enough in to just colour it. And you can hear the pork starting to sizzle now. So I give it a little colouring with the light soy sauce. And I take the dark soy sauce and do the same. This is sweeter. So now, let's take a look at that. What was, it, what was effectively just a bowl of water is now, it, it actually looks like a sauce. And that's going to be the, the liquid that we're going to braise the pork in. And again, that will take around, say, two hours. And what we're trying to do now is just colour the pork, release some of the fat, flip it over, brown it, because that brings out the natural sugars of the pork. And then we'll add it in there, again, lid on, forget. So the, the, these are very, very simple but effective dishes. And the beauty, as I keep saying to you now, let's go back to the low carb diet for a minute. A lot of people go onto the diet because they think it's the easiest way to lose weight, or they think it's a miracle cure. It's not. There is only one way to reduce your weight, and that's to reduce your calories. And Dr. Ellis has said that consistently since I've met him. Um, the, the calorie is, is the only important factor in weight loss. And you can get lean on eating chocolate cake if you want to. It's going to take you a long time and you're going to be very hungry. Now, low carbohydrate diets are for health, primarily. But they have a great bonus in weight loss. And the bonus is that it actually cuts your calorie intake naturally by about 30%. Because of the amount of fat that you're consuming, now, these may look like small pieces of pork belly, but believe you me, when you start to eat them, they'll fill you up very, very quickly because they're extremely rich. The fat gives you so much. Think about it. The fat, if you just look at calorie counts, fat is around 9 calories per gram with carbohydrates, proteins, down to around 4. So you've got a huge energy. You've got double the energy source and the fat that's going to fill you up. So it's a great way, if you're on a diet, if you're looking to lose weight, it's a fantastic way to do it because of the natural... Um, hunger suppression that occurs. So there you go, there's stage one completed. And uh, now we just have to wait. Stage two is when that's cooked, we put it in there, then we're finished, we just sit there and wait. Let's give you a quick update on the two pork dishes. The first one's in the oven cooking nicely. We can start now to smell the onions and garlic. Here we are, well actually let's go to the cooking liquid. You can see that's just about steaming now. And what we need to do now is just brown the other side of this pork. You can see if I flip it over, you can see now that some of the fat and oil is released, but you can see the skin is starting to crisp. We want to get those bits crispy, then we're going to brown the other side. And the reason I'm not doing this at too much of a high temperature is it's going to, it's going to burst. The skin's going to pop, and it's going to spray fat and oil everywhere. So you, you take your time, do it slowly, and it will brown nicely. You can probably crank it up a bit. Then when it's browned, in there, two hours. And we don't. Alright, so come out and have a look at this now. We've got the pork browned both sides. I'm going to put some more water in just to give it, um, that's probably about right there. And then we'll flip the pork probably in about an hour's time. And all that remains to do now is lid on. Make sure, we want, to bring it, we want it simmering very, very gently. So we'll start with, we'll start this right, we'll start it down probably just a notch off the very bottom just to build up the heat. Then we'll lower it as much as we can. You could put it in the oven as well, by the way. But for me, it's easier. It saves me lifting that dish and carrying it over there. That's effort. So this is easy. Okay, so I started off by telling you this is the king of the low-carb foods. And you can see why. So here is the crispy pork skin. And you can see that the... Fries it off the rack here. The meat on the underside is nice and cooked. And in the middle is extremely moist meat with a layer of fat that sits just under the skin. So, we, as I said to you, growing up as a kid in England, we fight for this stuff all day long because this was the best part. 
Um, if, you look at the, if you look at the pan now, you can see that the garlic and the onions have, have caramelised. The liquid's almost all evaporated. To make a sauce out of this, which I'll do in a minute, we just add some chicken stock. And away you go. Because then all of that flavour that's stuck at the bottom of the pan will then release and we'll strain the onions and the garlic. I mean, I actually know people who want to eat them, so the choice is up to you. Up to you. But don't be put off by this burnt stuff here, what looks to be burnt. It's not. That will give you the intensity of the flavour as you make the sauce. And the sauce will be a nice, nice light sauce that so you just pour over the top. And I'll serve it with a bit of this chicken for these guys. And some of these potatoes I've got cooking over there. But this, you're in a hurry to cut this and carve it now. It must rest. Because all of that steam now has to just settle down. If you carve it now, it will just break apart. And you'll see a huge amount of steam. The same as what happened with the chicken here. And that's been resting for about 30 minutes. So this needs about a good 15, 20 minutes at the absolute minimum. And if you were cooking this Chinese style, this would come to room temperature before you'd even touch it. So again, it's cooked, the skin is crispy. That's the indication of the cooking time for me. It's the easiest one. It's better than the clock. And even just by putting the knife in now, you, you can, if I come this side, you can see how easy this knife is going in. So it's really, really moist. 